Now, there are many secrets that we all wish our parents would have taught us, school would have taught us. That would have saved us a lot of debts. And throughout my years of living, <laughs> there's a lot of mistakes that I made in my first couple years of college, first couple years of being out there in the world by myself that I definitely want you guys to avoid making financially. So I'm going to give you guys seven tips and seven things that will help you a lot in your journey. And even as an adult, okay, you still need this because even in my adult years, I still go by these practices. And this is why we see a lot of people just seem to have it all together. A lot of them, if they don't have a rich parent supporting them or rich family, have just mastered these tips. We're gonna get into them. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Green Elude Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, I do have some some notes here that I took down of mine. The first helpful tip that I'm going to give you is that you do not need a degree to make money. <laughs> I wish somebody would have told me that because all my life I thought if I want to be successful, if I want to make money, then I have to go get a college degree. It doesn't matter in what field. That's the only way to make money. Since the beginning of time, back then, the way most people you knew if they were rich or not was how much cattle they had, if they were farmers. Farmers used to be the big, and then it became railroads and oil and stuff when machine and technology started coming in, right? Machinery, technology, etc. And so many people just get specialization uh, there's some words I just cannot say. <laughs> Y'all know me and my language barriers, but there's some specializations that you can get. And we've been fed this lie that in order to be uh, successful in life that you need some big degree and with that degree you need to be in this big career I'm telling you if I knew this now I would have saved myself on some loans because I have loans that's like what sixty thousand dollars worth of loans for school that I'm probably never gonna use my degree ever in my life but we don't know we don't know in the future but I always tell people if I knew then what I know now I wouldn't have went that far with school or go that deep. Now, I'm not telling people not to go to school, okay? That's not what I'm saying. Stay in school, kids. That's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is unless you're going to be like a surgeon, a doctor, a lawyer, things that you, you know, you need school for, then, you know, you know, you feel me? Like if you want to be a psychologist, a therapist, whatever, that's what you need for. But if you don't have no real passion for these fields and you're just kind of just doing it, you're going to accumulate a lot of student debt. It's going to take you a while to pay off. And this is one of the mistakes that I just wish I didn't make in my life because I do. <laughs> Guys, I know some doctors. I know some doctors that are still paying student loans from med school. They're making money and they can't even live the way that they're living because they will collect, they will collect. Next tip is pay your taxes on time. Failing to pay your taxes can result in hefty fines and even legal trouble. Plus, it's just the responsible thing to do as a member of society. Now, I'll say this, even if you're an influencer, you especially if you're an entrepreneur, influencer, you have your own business, or maybe you went to trade school and you're working elsewhere, a lot of things that our parents don't teach us when we're young or schools don't teach us is that, hey, just because maybe you made a $50,000 check and you went and spend all of it went and bought stuff and you didn't take anything aside for your taxes uncle sam will come to collect i'm gonna let you know right now and they come and collect in the worst way they will let years pass like a year two years and you see nobody say nothing to you but eventually you wait long enough to not file your taxes all of a sudden it's tax evasion or whatever don't hide your money also they will fight, especially when the economy is going bad. That's when the governments globally start to really, like you're gonna see a lot of celebrities lately have been in like offshore um, scams, you know, Shakira. They'll be in the little off course, uh, offshore stuff. You're gonna see a lot more of these happening as the economy gets worse because they not gonna let you get away with that, okay? So don't forget to pay your taxes. And especially a lot of influencers, they'll do brand deals, they'll do this or that, and they're just not putting money aside. And <laughs> Trust me, they're watching you. They're watching your trips, what you're buying, the stuff you're flexing. They can trace everything. And I think even like Cash App now, they can have access to that and like um, PayPal, all of those things to see what people are sending you, what money, where's money coming in from. Everything's gonna be digital for a reason. I don't think in the next five years, it's gonna be you could keep money under your couch. Or I think there's gonna be a time where there's like, hey, 
there we will not use paper money anymore everything's going to be digital so they'll be able to keep track of everything and you always want to put money aside for your taxes please don't be that person okay third is create a budget and stick to it creating a budget is crucial if you want to take control of your finances it doesn't have to be complicated just write down your monthly income and expenses and make sure you are not spending more than you're earning this will help you avoid living paycheck to paycheck and running up credit card debts right i kept hearing about budgeting that's one thing i'll say maybe most most parents do tell you about or most um, videos that talk about finance or classes or anything like that they always talk about budgeting but people don't take that serious like really write down what are your expenses one thing I noticed with myself when I decided to be an adult with my money because I wasn't always an adult I would even look at like Hulu account Netflix account like little accounts that I would have that I wouldn't even know the price like when we try to budget we think of the major bills right like the house you think of the car or you think of maybe you'll add your phone bill in there but you think of like electricity and stuff like that insurance and you don't consider the little bills when you're budgeting like food or if you're a lady you don't include feminine products that you will have to buy monthly especially when you live by yourself it's a rude awakening that yo there's a lot a lot of college students when they go off on their own they underestimate just how much bills will be and a lot of people want to grow up so fast if i could go back <laughs> i would not want to be grown so fast but a lot of people want to grow up so fast they underestimate the amount of bills that they will have to pay and be responsible for so include all of those things in there like you'll have gym memberships you'll have hair products that you may need deodorant perfume underwear um if you're a guy you have your i, I don't know how to, you say it in english you know sleep shimizet but you have a lot to consider you know little things that you may like to have you know in groceries let's not even talk about groceries Ooh, child. so i wouldn't consider all of those things into my budget and then i'll just calculate the big things and I, oh i only need x amount of dollars for this month okay da, da, da. and then you make the x amount of dollars and then you're like struggling somewhere else you know and sometimes you can overestimate like i'll make a promise to someone without budgeting like oh, okay i can help you this month with this i'll you know it's no problem and then you start helping them and then you didn't budget something correctly and then now your finances is you know all wrecked so please don't underestimate budgeting and being sure monthly of how much you're going to need to make to survive for the month and then stick to your budget when you have a budget it makes it easier to be responsible because you know when you're going to be getting out of it like it's okay to have multiple accounts with one bank or other banks i have several accounts i have an account for savings i have an account for checking i have an account for pleasure i have an account for this fund if you vacation fund like if i'm gonna have vacation this is my funds for it or whatever that way when you start to spend over in your pleasure you know hey i'm not gonna go into my vacation fund I, it's just enough pleasure for the month i already went over that budget it is what it is and when you don't have that that's a tip that works for me but when you don't have that like organized structure you start to fall out <laughs> maybe you've already overspent on your pleasure and then you start taking it from your savings you start making multiple transfers like you don't want to be that person so really calculate so you're not making transfers and then you're being responsible I'm not saying to beat yourself up every month if you go over budget but it's best to like be realistic with yourself sometimes be upset with yourself and give yourself a hard talking to and be like yo this month I really went overboard I, I can't keep going like this month to month just going overboard or whatever maybe I need to maybe allocate some funds if I was putting $50 towards my if I was putting $100 towards my vacation fund or whatever for the summer and there all the time maybe let me put 75 instead and put an extra 25 into my leisure fund because I keep going over or whatever the case may be. Next is build an emergency fund. Life is unpredictable and unexpected. Expenses can arise at any time. So that's why it's important to have an emergency fund that can cover three to six months of living expenses. This will help you avoid dipping into your savings or going into debt when an emergency strikes. And this is one even as an adult you struggle with. Like, <laughs> trust me, I always think of the worse and I try not to be that way but it helps me to be very responsible so I always think of the worst that could possibly happen and I kind of prepare for that like what if YouTube shuts down or in other business ventures that I'm doing things go wrong because everything is digital now if website crashes all of these things whatever what will I do I mean I don't want if 
any of those things happen, I'm just on the streets, right? You gotta think that for yourself. The economy might go bad. Look what happened when we were all on lockdown. A lot of people were stressed. They didn't know what to do because they didn't have an emergency fund um, and they didn't know what to do. A lot of people were stressed and I don't want that for any of you guys. I want you guys, if there were to be another lockdown or another crisis or a pandemic or something like that, you're secure, you know, I got at least six months. I always say a year, in six months <laughs> you need at least a year i'm saying that's that safe blanket because for some people after the panoramic it was over a year they were still trying to get some um checks from the government because they couldn't find a job they couldn't you know the jobs are not paying enough to sustain maybe you'll find a job but it's not paying enough to sustain if you have a savings say everything goes bad and i have to go work at like mcdonald's or something that's not even like an insult but say your your cost of living far exceeds what you will be making at mcdonald's right so at least I have a savings. I'm just adding on whatever that is. I'm, I can work there too while I'm waiting to get back to a position where I'm good or whatever without stressing. It's very important to have an emergency fund and people don't talk about that enough. I wouldn't even say three to six months. I would say a year, just a year's worth of rent or mortgage, a year's worth of um, utilities. When you have some extra funds, don't just, oh, I have extra funds. Let me go to Chanel. <laughs> Let me go to Bulgari. Let me go, you know, no. I have extra funds. Let me pay some extra bills. I don't have to think about that. You can have fun. I'm not telling you guys to not have fun. That's another toxic thing they tell you. It's like, if you wanna be responsible and save money, you cannot have fun. You can have fun, but be responsible also and have something saved. Five is invest in your future. Whether it's through a retirement account, stocks, or real estate, it's important to invest in your future. If you want to build wealth over time, start as early as possible and make smart, informed decisions align with your long-term goals right don't wait you're never too young to start working on your future um i know for me one of the reasons i've been able to survive adulthood because it's survival right is the minute i started knowing these things i started working like what can i do what can i do investing in that one thing that i never knew why i would do this but i would be obsessively learning other languages i wanted to just be a polyglot like i don't have to go to school for that whatever when duolingo came out and all of that i'm obsessively always learning another language and people are like why it's like you never know there might be a position out there if all things go bad where they are looking for someone that maybe me and this other person have the same credentials and everything, but they pick me because they see that I speak nine languages, 10 languages. In my free time, instead of gossiping or doing something, I'm investing in the potential future that it's gonna open way more doors for me to speak different languages than not. So those are things that are investments too. And learning different skills are investments too. So invest in things like that, learn stocks. You, Some of you are like 35, 40, um, you're getting up there in age or 25 even, and you still don't know anything about stocks. Like buy stocks for learning stocks for dummies on Amazon. I have a book here, like stocks for dummies and stuff, which was my first book that introduced me to stocks or the introduction of stocks, etc. Buy some books learn about it like what's the big deal everybody's talking about stocks this stocks that don't fall for like you know these crypto scams and these four experiences i'm just saying but learn the ins and outs of these companies too and things that you can do that's an investment in your future next is six live within your means this one might seem obvious but it's worth mentioning it's tempting to want the latest greatest gadgets cars and clothes but it's important to live within your means don't buy things you can't afford and avoid taking on too much debt it's better to save up for something you really want than to go into debt just to have it right and that is very tricky because especially when you're the younger you are you're more impulsive so you're gonna want <laughs> to buy certain things maybe because everybody else have it it's really cute you want it every time apple comes out you go and you upgrade your phone you don't have to me i'll upgrade probably every three years three to four years or whatever and if something happens to my phone like this phone it already cracked like i can't see it my camera cracked or something like that if you could get it fixed why do you need to upgrade everything or the latest shoes come you do a lot of celebrities even go broke and more of them have been talking more and more about this um trying to keep up with the joneses ain't no sense in trying to keep up with nobody that's not gonna be able to feed you you don't have to keep up with the latest season. I know back then there was a thing where, oh, she's wearing last season shoes, ill. Like shows would try to portray that. Now nobody cares about that. It's all about vintage pieces, collectibles, um, antiques, archives. You know, people go to thrift stores to collect them. You don't have to keep up with no trends and stuff. Live within your means. I said in my previous video on be your own daddy, make your own sugar, <laughs> how to live the luxurious life. 
single and stuff like that that one of the main things you have no business trying to live luxurious if your finances are not in order and i know people are like oh you shouldn't say that you absolutely can't no you're just gonna build more stress for yourself getting into more debt find some cheaper ways to live a peaceful life where you shouldn't be breaking your bank every month while you're living paycheck to paycheck just to try to keep up with instagram and people and stuff like that take a break and i wish people would have said this to the youngins because a lot of them have to learn the hard way you don't need to do that trust me trust me there's no sense in trying to keep up with nobody in this day and age the seventh is get educated about personal finance make an effort to educate yourself about personal finance there's a wealth of information available online youtube you know including articles podcasts and videos that can help you improve your financial literacy this can help you make informed decisions about your money and feel more confident about your financial future financial security takes time and effort but it's worth it in the long run right so make some informed decisions instead of watching you know stuff that's just not gonna help you i say i I'm, I'm with the foolishness sometimes you can watch some like one or two things you know that's foolishness but for every foolish thing you watch make sure there's something else that's going to help you elevate that you're watching to have a balance you know like if i'm gonna watch some crazy thing i'm gonna have something in there that's gonna elevate me some podcasts learn to subscribe to certain podcasts that will educate you not just on finances but life mental health do that you know what i mean and then learn by the books like i said learn even you watching this video is a step in that and ask people that came before you that have experience that are successful ask some questions do not be ashamed you have no idea how unashamed i am i will ask somebody go up to them and say hey how did you do this how did you make all this money how did you do that? what did you do what did and there's no shame in the game because at the end of the day knowledge is power the bible said my people perish for they lack knowledge okay knowledge is power Power. and the more you know about financial literacy the better you'll be don't let yourself and it's never too late to make money to get yourself out of the situation that you're in you can be 40 50 60 there's um i think the oldest person when i was in college i was in my classroom she was like 67 years old in college just trying to get her life back and she graduated with the rest of us got a job it's never too late as long as you're breathing you're capable you can do something with your life okay you can keep looking for better opportunities learning other languages and looking for positions in life that's going to pay you more and more you don't have to settle for what you have you just got to want it and be resourceful and look for the information out there which is my bonus tip to you guys since you guys stayed this far put a yellow heart in the comments since you guys stayed this far but my bonus tip would be to be resourceful which is also learning about financial literacy but going out there nobody's gonna hold your hand that's one thing i wish people would have told me like those that came before me too is like nobody's gonna hold your hand nobody's gonna come rescue you you're gonna have to fall a lot when you were learning to walk right it's just the same with adulthood and financial stability and literacy you're gonna have to make a lot of mistakes before it lands for you sometimes the information is in your face you hear it make a statement so that but it's not until you experience it you go through rock bottom or you go through a difficult financial difficulty where it starts to land and another bonus that i would give is stop lending so much when you don't have it i know you have a good heart like i'm the type that always want to help out anyone who call me whether it's family or friends or whatever like oh you're in a difficult situation let me help you out a couple months sending money here and there and then it takes a toll on you because then you start being late on certain payments or you start collecting debt and you don't know how to cut these people off because now they become dependent on you almost to the point where they're not even making any effort themselves you know but that goes with you trying to be there when someone has the knowledge potential to have the same hours in a day as you their limbs are working they fluent in different languages can write can read can work they're educated and you're steady making it a habit to lend to them there's a lot of friends i have to give this speech to because i know a lot of my friends that are burnt out they're like a candle burning on two ends you know taking care of all their friends and all of their families every week their friend is hey can you spot me 100 can you spot me 250 and it's like you can't keep doing that because they all add up you gotta hold people accountable too okay god says to be there for the homeless the the widow okay <laughs> and those who really cannot do anything for themselves the person who's lame physically with their bodies but a lot of y'all i said it in another video y'all sons living in your basements are neither of those and yet you're still babying them they're, they're 25, 26, not in school, just in your basement playing video games. A lot of your friends are smart. 
They went to school, had the same opportunities constantly, and you're going into debt, taking on too much responsibility. I understand too, our parents can get to a certain age where they can't work anymore, but some parents be 40 or 50. They're not even like incapable yet. And they feel like, okay, now you just starting to figure things out for yourself. And it's like, you owe them something to kind of, you know, I, that in itself is toxic and no real parent that I love you too will put you through that knowing the stress it is just to survive that you're doing good. It'll be like good job for you. And you help your parents, like you help them when you can stocking groceries, but you shouldn't just cause you start making some money, like you're not stable yet. You don't have no emergency funds. Because that's another mistake people do. They start making money. They don't have like emergency funds, nothing. And then they go and buy their parents a house, tell them to quit work, get them a car, and all of these things. And then boom, tragedy happened. They lose their jobs. These people end up taking their lives because they done went and put a lot on them. Like look at the stories of MC Hammer and so much more. They had their entourage, their families that they were taking care of. Be responsible, okay? You can help people out every now and then, but don't make it a habit because it's not going to help you. You don't have to pay for everyone at the table when you go eat. You really don't. If they can't afford it, they shouldn't have went out to eat with you. That's point blank, period. But that's all I have to say to you guys. Comment below additional tips that I miss that you guys have and make sure you share with people that might need this. Share with your kids, share with your family, share with Facebook. I like you. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Mwah.